Hello everybody. My name is uh, Paul Beckwith and in this video I want to talk about how the ocean heat content has set yet another record in 2025. There was just a research paper released um, by Springer Nature, a peer-reviewed paper, and it involved three huge data sets from three independent groups and it found yet more records being set for ocean heat content. Now, I'd have Newton in this video, but he's kind of sleeping, dozing at my feet. And uh, I know what he wants. He wants a W-A-L-K. Uh, don't dare say that word because he'll be jumping up and grabbing on my arm and so on. Okay, so what's going on with the oceans and ocean heat content? Okay, so this is the, uh, you can download the PDF of the peer-reviewed paper, and it's right here. So it's in Atmosphere, Advances in Atmospheric Sciences 2026, quite a, an extensive author list um, from key groups in China, the US, and Europe. And what did they find out? Well, in 2025, Global ocean warming continued unabated. Of course, it's responding to the increased greenhouse gas concentrations, trapping more and more heat, and also the re reduction recently in sulfate aerosols, both over the oceans in the, in, with cleaner shipping fuels, but also um, the, the reduction of aerosols in the air over the land from cleaning up of industrial processes. So we're seeing long-term accumulation of heat in the ocean system, and that's a good sort of metric or barometer of the overall climate system because the heat capacity of the ocean is, of water is much, much higher than that of air, and there's an enormous volume of water in the ocean. So it takes a lot of energy to heat the ocean, and we did have a La Nina um, during 2025, but still we nearly set a new record. The, we, 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 it was like third, I believe, overall, or tied for second. So the global upper 2,000 meters of ocean heat content, it increased by about 23 plus or minus eight zeta joules. And I'll talk about what zeta joules is relative to 2024. So a big jump. And there's, this is a, there's, there's three different groups, IAP, um, one called Cigar, and Copernicus. So US one, European one, and Chinese one. About 33% of the global ocean ranked among its historical top three warmest years. That's from 1958 to 2025, when we have good data. Over 50, about 50% 50 for 7%, 7 um, fell within the top five, including the tropical and South Atlantic Ocean, the Mediterranean Sea, North Indian Ocean, and Southern Oceans. So we're getting broad ocean warming across basins. So if you want to put it in terms of a watts per square meter uh, number, from zero to 2,000 meter ocean heat content increased 0 0.14 watts per square meter. That's, that's every decade. That was between 1960 and 2025, and that jumped up to 0.32. So compare 0.32 to 0.14 just in the last uh, um, in the last two decades. It jumped up much, much higher, and that's consistent with Earth energy imbalance measurements. So more energy coming into the system, less going out, and I've talked about the reasons for that. In the global annual mean sea surface temperature, which is at the very surface, it's, we've got lots of data on that. It was about half a degree Celsius above the 1981 to 2010 baseline in 2025, 0.12. It was slightly lower than in 2024, the record year, because there was a La Nina. Now before I, so this is the abstract. Now before I go on, I just want to bring up, you know, the Zeta Joule. So it's a massive amount of energy. It's 10 to the 21 joules. It's, uh, 
and it's primarily used, it says, to measure the heat absorbed by the Earth's ocean. So context. The entire world generates about one zeta joule, and that's about 10 times the world's annual electricity gener generation. Okay, oh, sorry. One zeta joule is about 10 times the world's annual electricity generation. So a zeta joule 10 times higher. So it's a massive amount of energy we're talking about. Nuclear bombs, in order the amount of heat the oceans absorb annually, is equivalent to several Hiroshima-sized atomic bombs exploding every second of every day. Um, the oceans are, have absorbed over 90% of the excess atmospheric heat. And um, yeah, so it's just a, it's just a huge, huge amount of energy. So, okay, um, I'm not going to go through the text. There's lots of details about the different groups and so on. Let's just scroll down to the results. So this is global ocean heat content in the upper 2,000 meters by the IAP. Um, most, most of this work is from the Chinese uh, group. And you can see, you know, there's fluctuation here from 1958 on, but then it's been a steady, steady rise and it looks like it's even accelerating now and uh the baseline the zero is 1981 to 2010 mean so you can see um <coughs> what's happening here and this is the european group copernicus group and then the um the the another group well this sorry this is a cigar group but copernicus is here um, this is copernicus in the eu european union Okay, so it's a massive increase, and you can see, um, you know, this is the overall number, so highest ever. The the change was um, also very significant, but there there was warmer ocean in a previous year um, because the El Nino tapered this one off. Okay, so sea surface temperature, same sort of plots here. You can see sea surface temperature rise. Oh, well, this is ocean heat content. Again, zero to 2,000 meters. You can see the heating rate. There is some fluctuation. Um, this is in watts per square meter, but we're, you know, it's inexorably rising. Um, and this is the global mean sea surface temperature from all of the different, from the different groups here. This is all of the different years. And we're, you can see where we are here in 2025, right here. Uh, this was 2024 very very hot year with with el nino um and then 2023 i believe okay so it wasn't it wasn't the hottest but we, we had the la nina okay and this is all the different data groups global sea surface temperature anomaly you know pushing up to 0.6 degrees celsius that's averaged over the whole ocean um, this is the ranked order of the five hottest years of the global mean sea surface temperature anomaly since 1955. So you can see 2024 was the warmest year um, for all of these. Strong El Nino warmed it up. 2023 um, is shown next, and then 2025 there is, is a close third. Okay, so, you know, all in the last few years. This is where the ocean's heating up the most. 2025 ocean heat content, zero to 2,000 meters. You got to multiply it. Remember, a meter is 3.3 feet. So this is 6,600 uh, feet if you want to convert it. It's over, you know, it's two kilometers. It's over a mile deep. And you can see the areas um, in the Pacific that have really heated and then up here in the, in the Atlantic, North Atlantic, and then also in this band, um, about 40 degrees south latitude. Tremendous heating in those regions. A little bit of cooling here. This is reflective of the La Nina, part of the ENSO oscillations. You know, the, the, the most cooling is done, interestingly, in this area. And, uh, yeah, it's it's just, uh, you know, these areas are, are like it's... So there is structure. And notice that the poles are warming faster than, than close to the equator. Right, and I've talked about temperature, polar temperature amplification. You can look at the different basins of the Atlantic Ocean. This is down 
depth and this is uh this is uh latitude um okay uh and you so you can see the the basin and where where most of the heating is occurring this is the pacific ocean so up about 40 degrees north that's this part right here you can see the structure through the through the water depth through the water column and then um, this is this is a ranking of 2025 ocean heat content zero to two thousand meters since 1958 so first the the bright red areas are first place those are the warmest ever and then and then so on um, this is the coolest region right here okay um, this is more ocean heat content. This is in the different, there's usually three map, three of everything, like one for each of the independent groups. But you, so you can see there's some difference in the fine details. And then we can go to, um, this is sea surface temperature anomalies now, so very, very hot in the, in the uh, North Pacific. Uh, two different groups. Um, the anomaly relative to t the previous year, 2024, uh, so 2024 set a record high level, so you're seeing more blue than red here. Um, and you can see where, you know, this is the uh, the La Nina condition uh, causing this. And uh, so 2025 just blew away all the, or 2024 blew away all the records. So when you subtract, take tw the anomaly from 2025 relative to 2024, you get the blue there. Um, that's from both the two different data sets. Um, this is a kind of hard to decipher, but there's different regions here, and this just shows like the temperature graph from '58 to present day. Um, the, uh, the, the this is the um, the data showing that the, the rise of temperature in the different basins. So we've got Atlantic, Tropical Atlantic, Mediterranean, North Atlantic, <laughs> Indian Ocean. North Pacific, right, all the different regions, um, Southern Ocean, steady rise, okay, so all the data is there uh, on a basin um, uh, basin um, case, and this is in the uh, Mediterranean Sea, um, this is between Genova and Palermo, the, uh, the Sic Sicily um, Mediterranean Sea, so it's a, basically a transect here, you can see how the warming this is uh, how the warming is changing with um, relative, you know, you know, relative to the baseline, and I believe this is the uh, uh, water water depth, right? So most of the heating at the, most of the changes at the surface, and uh, yeah, so those are the key points. So the so basically. This is done every year. It's updated every year and usually comes out at the beginning of the year. So this paper was just published. It's open source. I'll give you the link. So please have a look at it. And uh, so basically the data is based on multiple observational and reanalysis data sets, three different independent research groups. The global ocean continued to warm in 2025, the upper 2000 meters reached its highest value ever observed, despite a prevailing weak La Nina state throughout the year. Um, the global ocean gained about 23 zeta joules of heat. So, right, 10 to the 21st joules, one zeta joule is about 10 times the total global electricity production. So you can see, you know, these are enormous, represent enormous heating of the ocean and 33% of the global ocean reached the top three warmest values in the historical record. Okay, so, and, and then it does mention a little bit about some of the effects. So it talks about climate hotspots of salinization, so saltiness, deoxygenation of the oceans, right? Warmer oceans can't hold as much oxygen or any dissolved gas, and acidification. Okay, the acidification of the ocean as well. Um, and they, so the four climatic impact drivers, they talk about temperature, salinity, dissolved oxygen, pH, right? These are reaching deep into the ocean. 
especially in the North Atlantic and Mediterranean. So the ocean ecosystems and the life they support are much more fragile, right? As the, as the warming is increasing. And then, so it talks about ocean warming continues to exert profound impacts on the Earth's system. The rising ocean heat content remains a fundamental contributor to global sea level rise. Because as you heat up the water, it thermally expands and then it, it goes, so it rises on all coastlines. Uh, it needs to occupy more volume because of the thermal expansion. There, it reinforces marine heat waves and intensifies extreme weather events, right? Because warmer ocean means there's more evaporation, there's more convective uplift, there's more atmospheric uh, turmoil. Um, and a lot more water vapor up in the atmosphere, which when it condenses, causes these massive storms. So this is a very, very important study. And it just shows that the oceans continue to rapidly increase. Anyway, thank you for listening and watching my video. Please share and please consider donating at PayPal to support my research and videos. And there's also a, uh, a GoFundMe uh, site here to uh, raise a bit of funds to uh, continue on my work. So thanks again and uh, bye for now.